All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. Um, I like to come to you guys real quick with the Sabbath day slash new moon video because today is the new moon in the Sabbath. All right, today is August the tenth, or <clears throat> well, last night was August the tenth. Excuse me. And the Sabbath came, and the new moon came in at four something a.m. So therefore, you account the night before which is how the scriptures go, because when you go to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, and um, we'll start at verse 3. It says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So you see that? It says, the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, people got to understand this, that the day starts what? In the evening. That's why the Most High says, and evening and morning were the first day. Now, how do we keep our Sabbath days, all right? How do we keep our Sabbath days? When do we know when the Sabbath comes in, all right? So, and that's a very good question. So when we go to Leviticus, I'm going to skip down to I think verse 23 is what I'm looking for. No, listen, I'm, I'm looking for. Um, verse. All right, so I'm going I'm to let's let's start at verse 27, because this is talking about the the day of atonement. So verse 27, Leviticus 23, and, and, let me, and let me share with you that Leviticus chapter 23, that whole chapter is about feast days, all right? It, it goes into the new moon, it goes into memorial blowing the trumpets, which is the new moon, and it goes into the weekly Sabbath, Passover, Feast of Pentecost, which is a Feast of First Fruits, and Tabernacles, and Day of Atonement. All right, all the other feasts come after that, like Perim and the destruction of Nicanor, uh, the day of Simon, and the feast of dedication, which is Hanukkah, all right, which is spoken of in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, I believe, all right? But right here, it states in Leviticus 23 and verse 27, it says, also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whosoever, for whatsoever, excuse me, soul it be, that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So the soul that needed to be afflicted is every soul, every soul, all ages. Okay? And the affliction is you what? It's, it's called self-denial, which is fasting. Okay? No food, no water. No food and no water. And whatsoever soul, in verse 30, it be that doeth any work in that same day. That same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations in your dwellings. Here's a key point right here in verse 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Ye shall afflict your souls. And the ninth day of the month at even, okay, at even, from even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. See that? 
Now, this is not talking about, oh, this particular Sabbath day. This Sabbath rule, uh, from even to even you say you celebrate your Sabbath, is talking about all Sabbaths. Okay? All Sabbaths. Uh, the word I want to look up is even. Evening, night. Okay? Nighttime. All right? When is the evening? Because some people will say, see, sunset. So, no, evening. When is the evening? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 7. It, so, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 9 says, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. See, that's when the evening is. In the black and dark night. Okay? In the black and dark night. Not when the light got red and, and blue. Going No, in the dark and black night. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. That's when the Sabbath has come in. And that's when it ends. Okay? So when we go back to Leviticus 23 and 32, it says what? From evening to uh, evening shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Okay? No if, ands, and buts about it. So that's how we know when the Sabbath comes in. Also, let's go to one more scripture to let you know that the day begins. The day begins at sundown. The feast coming at sundown. What does it say right here? So we go to Isaiah 30 and 29. It says, ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept. All right. So that's a, a what? What's a holy solemnity? A holy solemnity is a feast day. It's a solemn gathering. It's a sacred day, a special day. It's, all right. And, and kept, oh, excuse me, in gladness of heart. And when, when. One goeth with a pipe to come unto the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. So you should be excited, you know, singing songs, playing music. Okay? So you should be happy that this day of rest has come. Because this is what we're going to be doing in the kingdom. You're not going to be sitting around, scratching up butts, angry at whatever, whomever. You ain't going to have a baby daddy in the kingdom. You ain't going to have a baby mama in the kingdom. All right, that does that will not exist. Hatred will not exist. The Most High is going to look at your heart, and that's what's going to determine whether you get in the kingdom or not. All right, that's why he says they're going to have they're, the angels are going to read the seal on your forehead. They're going to read your brain. All right, this person can come in. Oh, this person has this wickedness going on. He's still this way, and then they're going to read the works. They're going to go down your resume. So you better get your act together, Israelite man and Israelite woman. Okay? So, ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept. See? So we know that the night, it comes in at night when we read on Leviticus 23. That's the beginning. So when Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 says what? Evening and morning was called the first day. All right? Okay, so, what, how do we know when the moon comes in? How do we know, well, first off, there's moon phases, okay? He gave us the moon and the, and the stars and the sun for, for a calendar, basically. And the scripture says the moon is a sign for feast. So the moon, moon, to tell for short, let's, uh, Oh, shoot, I don't want to go on YouTube. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Let's see. Let's edit that part out of there, huh? <laughs> uh, what, was I, what was I thinking? All right. 
So we're going to the Apocrypha. Why that happened? So let's go to the Apocrypha. We're going to go to. Let me see. Let me skip down fast. Let me Um, um, do I want to read set? Uh, well, this one is a uh... no, I don't really want to deal with 33, although it's good information. Let's just cut to the chase. Verse 43. And my brother down in LA did a great video on his, on, you know, bringing out this understanding of the new moon. But the understanding of the moon period, all right, is that the moon is a sign for feasts, okay? And we're going to read that right here. It says in verse 7, no, I'm going to start at verse 6, excuse me. He made the moon also to serve in her seasons for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is a sign from the moon is a sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. So a brother reads that and says, see, it decreases. The new moon got to be the full moon. No, it's not saying that. Brother, stop being simple-minded. Please stop being simple-minded. It's perfected, so that's where all the moon... No, no, no. You're wrong. You're very wrong. Okay? We're going to get to that. It says, the month is called after her name. 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 Let's, 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 let's just deal with some common sense, people. All right? Let's deal with some common sense. All right, so let's just read about the moon. It's what you guys gotta. <laughs> it's what you guys gotta do, basically. All right, y'all gotta sit here and look up some information. Don't don't follow a wicked, evil man. Okay, you gotta learn for yourself. So the word moon. Okay. I want to go to the etymology of the word. Oh, the name. Okay. It says the English proper name, Earth's natural satellite, is the moon, which is non scientific text, usually not capitalized. The noun moon is derived from the old English mana, which like all Germanic language cognates stems or the Proto-Germanic, you know, which comes from the Proto-Indo-European moon month. So doesn't the, the, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Moon month. Okay, which comes from the Proto-European root, me, to measure. The month being the ancient unit of time measured by what? The moon. Okay. It comes for the word, okay, month. It, the moon and month means the same thing. And it measures the what? It measures the time. And basically, you have a cycle. All right, there's 29.5 days in a month, which you round it up, it's 30 days. When you go into the scriptures, 29.5, you round up, that's 30 days. Okay? That's 30 days.
So moving on. So we know that the word month, but let's let's even let's even look up the word month real quick. A month is a unit of time used with calendars, which is approximately as long as a natural period related to the motion of the moon. Okay. Month and moon are cognates. Okay. In linguistics, cognates are words that have a common etymolo etymological origin. For example, the English word dish and the German word tisch, table, are cognates because they both come from the Latin discus which relates to their flat surfaces. Cognates have, may have evolved similar, different, or, or opposite meanings. Okay, the traditional concept arose with the cycle of the moon phases. Okay? Such months, lunations, are synodic months and last approximately 29.53 days. Okay? So the word month is a unit of time and it's telling you that it, it, go, it relates to the motion of the moon. What? The moon, the month and moon are cognates. Very simple, people. So when you're saying it's the new moon, you're saying it's the new month. It's the new month. OK, so when it says when it says the month is called after her name. And then it what? So that means saying the new moon or the month is called what? After her name, then it increases. See that? Increasing wonderfully in her changing. There's no changing when the moon is fully perfected. Okay? Being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So when you go into the scriptures, and you go into Numbers, chapter 10, and it states, also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days, in the beginnings of in the beginning of your months. Hold on. What do you mean? Your Rosh. Let's see what that means. The head. The top. The upper part. The chief. The front. Beginning. Okay. In the beginning. All right. So right here, it says a little figurative meaning of the place of time, rank, band, the beginning, the captain. So it starts with the head. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That's the beginning. You don't start from the feet up. You don't start from the midsection. You start at the head. That's why it says the lead. Okay. Ruler. Okay. Place and time, rank. So the parentheses, place and time. That's what we're dealing with, time. So in the beginning of your months, right? So we go back to it. It's easier on my phone. Okay. In the beginning of your months, of your months, of your Kadash, the new moon. Okay. Monthly, the first day of the month. So I don't need to go into scriptures to show you that the new moon is the first day of the month. It shows you right here, the first day of the month. If you want to find out if the new moon is the first day of the month, go to 1 Samuel chapter 20 and um, read that whole chapter. It deals with David and Saul, but the new moon is brought up right then and there. Okay. Okay, so the first day of the month. So that's why it says the month is called after her name increasing wonderfully interchanging when you go to the root word it says to be new to renew to repair okay you're not repairing something in its perfection because it's perfect the key word to perfection is perfect so therefore the new moon cannot be 
the full moon. All right? The new moon cannot be the full moon. It's just madness. So, anyway. Oh, see? Right here is telling you 1 Samuel 20 and 5. It's mentioned. Okay? Anyway, so, therefore you guys know that the new moon is when the moon is complete dark. All right? So when you deal with the moon phases... Let's just say it like this. There you go. Now, a man can come along and say, I got a whole different understanding. Um, the new moon is a full moon and it's fully illuminated because God does this and God, no, no, sir. No, sir. Um, you need to come with way more info than your own uh, understanding you got from Africa. Okay, you need to you need to come with some real empirical data. Until you come with some empirical data, you're not you you're not coming with nothing. Okay, so anyways, the new moon is the beginning of the month, and then that's how you count your feasts. Because when you go back into the scriptures, it tells you on this day. You know, on the 14th day of the month, blah, 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 on the, uh, the 10th day of the month, okay? Now, the new moon is a feast, okay? It's a feast day. You can eat. That's why I said read First Samuel chapter 20 because it talks about how David didn't sit down at meat. You ain't eating cold meat on a feast day, all right? Only on the Sabbath is when you have the law that you cannot cook. But on the feast day, you can cook. All feast days... And I mean, feast days, I mean, the, all the high holy days are like, you know, tabernacles, Purim, uh, Pentecost, uh, Hanukkah, all the new moons, all right, the lamb on the Passover. Only, um, the only thing is a uh, day of atonement. You, there's no eating and drinking, period. All right, but that's a whole other story. Psalms 81. So, yeah, where it says, Psalms 81 and verse 3, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. It's a, it's, a, it's a solemn feast day. It's a Sabbath. I showed you guys that word solemnity is synonymous with the Sabbath. Okay? It's holy. It's sacred. It's the Sabbath. The new moon is a Sabbath. We, we read that in Numbers chapter 10 and verse 10. In the beginning of your days, in the beginning of your months, Okay, so with that, you know, if, if anybody wants any more in-depth information, I just want to do a quick video, okay, on how this new moon is a Sabbath. You know what, and I'm going to go back to it. Um, let me show you even more proof. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I was going to end it right there, but let me not. Let me... Uh, numbers 10 and 10. It, you know, in the day, in, also in the days of your gladness and in your solemn days, in the beginning of your day, of your months, ye shall blow up the trumpets and burn offerings. So in the beginning of your months is a Sabbath. Okay? It is a Sabbath. It is a new moon. All right? Um... When you go to Leviticus 23, you'll find out that the memorial of blowing the trumpets is a Sabbath. It is a new moon. Okay, that moon, you keep that. You say, man, we are in the sixth month. Is there any other high holy days besides the weekly Sabbaths? No. Okay. Okay, seventh month. Now we're in the memorial of blowing the trumpets. We have the tabernacles. We have... Um, We have two Sabbath days, the beginning of, well, I mean by the two Sabbath days, you have the first day and last day Sabbath. Then you have the 10th day Sabbath, which is a, which is the Day of Atonement, excuse me. All right. So these days you can cook. Also, you feast, you party, 
You go over a lesson. You just don't party the whole time. You go over a good lesson to feed your, the, the people's spirit. Okay? So it shouldn't be that difficult to understand. You got to come to Christ with simplicity. All right? Simplicity. So what I mean by not being dumb, just being easy to understand. Don't make things too difficult, too hard for you. The reason why you fight so hard because you're reading, you're listening to so many camps, so many people's information that are coming off confusing with thousands of books that are not the Bible. You see, what Bible did I go to? I just went to science, secular science. That's all I did. Okay? That's all I did. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say shalom.